Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to the Cyber Underground. I'm your guest host, Rochelle Mansilungan. And today's episode, we're going to find out how to start your career in the cybersecurity part two. <laughs> so the cybersecurity field, as a student, I know that this is a hot and pretty lucrative, financially lucrative career. But what steps could you take to get a head start into this career? What should students do to prepare themselves for the cybersecurity industry? And so today, I have a special guest. He's a close friend and a classmate of mine, Nathaniel Weeks. And 10 months ago, he was on the Cyber Underground with Dave and Andrew and um, talking about the same topic. But since then, his cybersecurity journey has grown, and we both are almost at the home stretch for our careers, so or our education. So, Nathaniel? Hi. Good to be here. Great having you yeah. here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, your background? Sure. So right now I'm a junior at University of Hawaii West Oahu. Mm -hmm. I'm in the Information Security and Assurance Program, and I'm also um, the Information uh, Control Systems Analyst at the Cybersecurity Coordination Center. And that's with Matthew Chapman, correct? That's correct. Um, so we do research. We have we each uh, in the center each have a specialized field, mm -hmm. and I do research on the industrial control systems. Oh, awesome. Okay, and then um, did you want to tell us, like, just go kind of backtrack and say like how you started sure. into this, why did you choose cybersecurity? Right, so um, yeah, last time we had a, a similar thing that we went over where, um, you know, I, I started off in IT actually. Right. So I was going for an associate's in IT, and then I started hearing about um, all the opportunities coming up in cyber. Um, I think one of the only other fields that was competing is, is data analytics is, is booming right now as right, well. Yes, um, but they were starting a new program at KCC, uh, Kapiolani Community College, and it was focused on cybersecurity. And so uh, you and I were two of the, yes. the first students through that program, and it definitely helped um, propel us toward the the program that was going on at uh, University of Hawaii, West Wahoo. Mm -hmm. So so that's, I mean, that's currently where I'm at, but I mean, previously I was uh, kind of uh, endlessly going to school and I didn't really know what I was going for, right. but uh, it's really given me a purpose and uh, the, you know, the, the professors have been great and definitely give you, uh, you know, something to, to keep pursuing all the time. I'm never bored. I'm never, awesome. yeah. <laughs> there's always stuff to do, right? Right, right. So what are some steps so, you know, that you did that to get your career, I mean, your career started? Right, so, um, I mean, step one was, was to start learning right. in uh, my own time and take classes. Right, so you invested in your education. That's the one route to take, which you right. both did, right? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an investment, right? Mm -hmm. So you end up uh, putting in a lot early on, but the payoff uh, for this career field is, is mm -hmm. pretty good. Um, so after that, after I started taking classes, the, the classes corresponded to certifications, and so I did those as well. Right, and, and you earned quite a few. So Nathaniel is one of my um, classmates that has, like, um, I think six. So, so I always tease him that one, I think after you finally graduate from um, West Oahu, I'm gonna buy him one of those accordion wallets and he'll just drop in and show all his, telling him I'm gonna get you that. Yeah. <laughs> but. I'll probably do well in the interview. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, I've, I've got five. Uh, one of them's not really a certification, okay. but I took the exam. Right. Uh, this was the most recent one, the, the CISSP oh, yes. exam. So I took the exam, but it requires uh, five years of experience without a bachelor's degree and four years of experience with a bachelor's degree. But they give you uh, enough time so that if, if you take it and you don't have the experience, they'll give you six years to accrue that experience from the time that you take the exam right. to uh, bump it up to the certification. So I don't actually have to take the exam again to get the certification. I just have to work over the next few years and document my work and, uh, and then I'll get the certification. So and this is a CISSP? That's correct. Right. And so, uh, um, Nathaniel and I are taking a class together it's on Saturday. So because he passed this um, exam, he doesn't need to take the final, which is awesome. <laughs> right. I, yeah, I think I was the only one to take yeah, it. Yeah, he was the only one in our class. One of the other students was planning to take it, so I, I, right. you know, they may have an update this weekend. So okay, awesome. You'll have to let me know. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll let you know. 
I think that's our last class, right? And okay. then, then our final. So uh, what else, what would you recommend for, you know, if, for students for studying for their certs? Are there any like sources that you would recommend them using or? Sure. Um, so in, a, in addition to, like I said, I, I line it with classes, right? Yeah. So we're in the CISSP class. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's above where I'm at to take that exam right now, right? This is a management level certification. It's really ahead of where I'm at. But I wanted to, you know, at least get the most out of the class. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to take the exam at least and also skip the final, so right. that's great. <laughs> um, so, you know, if, if you're taking a class, that's great. That'll help you a lot. But a lot of times in the class, you, you learn the, the material, but you won't learn in the context of the questions that you're going to be asked on those exams because they can be um, uh, pretty nebulous, right? You can mm -hmm. read into them, but um, it, it's hard to decipher what the question's even asking yeah. sometimes, right? That's very true. So even knowing the material, you have to be able to think like how they're thinking when they ask the question. So uh, I used transcender practice exams. Okay. It's now Kaplan IT, I believe. And uh, there's Total Tester, uh, that may be by Cengage. And there, there are a few other sources I used as well. Um, and do you, are these free or you have to pay yeah, for them? That everything, that, <laughs> yeah, everything I use is an investment, right? Yes, That's what exactly. I always refer to it as. But yeah, you, you end up spending a pretty penny on it. The, the exam itself was $700, oh. right? And then before that, the, the one I took before that was the CEH. Right. That one was roughly 600 and mm -hmm. so that was the certified ethical hacker. Um, and, you know, five other, or, well, three other exams uh, or certifications that I got. So. And the Network Plus, Security Plus. And the Security Plus, um, a lot of our classmates just recently um, right. passed that exam, too. So would you recommend, out of all the five that you have taken, for at least a, a student, if they can only afford one, what would right. you think? Security Plus, for right. sure. Uh, I mean, it's a bottleneck. Mm -hmm. So uh, a really qualified student that was... Uh, that's extremely intelligent and, yeah. and, and very hands-on and good with everything. He didn't have it recently, went out for, you know, different jobs, mm -hmm. wasn't getting anything, and one of our professors told him, you know, I would, I would have something lined up for you right now if you had mm -hmm. this certification. So uh, it definitely can hold you back right. if, you, if you don't have it. And that's so. what I've been told. And I also have two classmates, our, our former classmates, that they went to a boot camp. Mm -hmm. They did the boot camp, they took the exam, and now they're working. Right. So, that, right, and they came straight from the associates program, correct. so they didn't associates. even do the bachelor's yes. program. So that's um, another route you could do as well. Mm -hmm. And for, for all of this, though, you know, like we, we talk about certifications and mm -hmm. classes and, and education, uh, that's that's great for the resume and it's great to, to get your foot in the door right. somewhere. But as far as a career in cybersecurity, you need to be that lifelong learner. You, you need to be putting in the time outside of class, right. outside of requirements. So take the initiative to like yes. self-directed learning, right? Absolutely. Yes. And I know you you do that a lot, and you helped a lot of us, a lot of your classmates, like in, like studying and all that, right? You have study sessions. He and I just had that, like, was it last week, Saturday? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Before his exam, which was awesome. And right. I, he was also doing that at KCC as well. And I, at the, and I know you kind of started building your own computer environment at home, right? That's that's in the works. Okay. So the fall semester won't be quite so hectic for me, mm -hmm. and so there's some really great resources for building a, a pen testing lab. Yes. And um, I'm going to utilize that. I've got some switches and routers and uh, some old computers. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to throw some stuff together, right. and uh, also use virtualization to spin up more computers. Well, so other things that we could do, like I know you and I have done this, where we participated in the um, like capture the flag competition. So there's one going on right now, the National Cyber League. <laughs> um, so that one is actually a good way to practice as well for like hands-on skills and you know what you're going to actually do in the in the workforce. There's also the other one we did, remember the um, collegiate cyber defense competition? Yep. That one's a little bit harder, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're trying to simulate what you're going to encounter right. in real life. And so they sometimes can be pretty elaborate mm -hmm. in what they create, but uh, you know, the cyber, the CCDC, right? That was, um, it was extremely challenging, but they actually brought in hardware. We had yeah. an actual IP phone in there where they would call in help desk tickets mm -hmm. and then we were running an environment. For the NCL, it's, it's more of a capture the flag type thing. Right. Uh, CCDC was more like a simulation of yes. an environment. Um, but the NCL, they put in so much time developing those puzzles and mm -hmm. those challenges that it really helps to develop a lot of skills that you may not get outside of that. Right. Um, 
and that's something that one of our professors promotes um, a lot because he, you know he's he says this is what we teach in our classes. Mm -hmm. We can't possibly yes. cover everything that they A lot cover. of the tools that I've used, like from this past, when I did the regular season, there's a lot of things that I learned from our previous courses at, at West Oahu that I, mm -hmm. I used. And like, I would have never known how to do the, some challenges. And I, I did exceptionally better. Right. You know, I mean, I didn't place high, but I mean, it's, I mean, it's still an accomplishment because I, right. I could do things on my own without having to actually ask, I mean, I'm supposed to ask for help, but, you know, but, right. but I mean. Well, for mine, uh, it wasn't quite as successful this yeah. this semester uh, because I got one question out of a million, oh, yeah. probably. <laughs> and that's not what I I, yeah, I just didn't have the time it's to a, invest yeah. in it. It's, a, it's was, a lot, of, it's time consuming, that's right. for sure. Right. Yeah, because I didn't finish either. So. Right. Yeah, and I was focusing classes and, right. and that Before. certification exam yes. that was coming up, so yes. bad timing this semester. Totally. Right. <laughs> but in the fall, in the fall, yeah. I'll try. The fall is where we'll probably go harder, so yeah, right. definitely should mm -hmm. do that again. Um, the other things that I, I've experienced, and you also have done this, was um, gain experience through jobs or internships, volunteer work. So you want to talk a little bit about that, like what you've done? Sure. In the past? Um, <clears throat> so you and I have done a little bit of that when we were at KCC, right. when we did um, pen testing for companies. Yes. It was really, you know, more like email phishing mm -hmm. and uh, testing the employees to see if they were following best practices yeah. with their emails. Uh, because that's what, the way so many pe companies get hacked is, mm -hmm. is through email. Uh, so I did that. I, I've done an internship with High Tech Hui, with uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and they're all great people. And then, like I said, now I'm with the uh, Cybersecurity Coordination Center at West Oahu, and I have another internship lined up that I'm going to be starting soon. And all right. Yeah, I'm super excited about all of this. There's, there's so many opportunities out there. Not, yes. Um, so if you show that you're you know, aggressive about these degrees, about these certifications, about uh, your career, there's so many doors that will mm -hmm. open up. You have to pick and choose. And so I've, I've found myself saying no a lot right. more than saying yes to <laughs> I the have office. to learn how to sit do that. And Nathaniel always, because I have a lot on my plate and I say yes to everything for every opportunity, but. <laughs> right, we've taken different <laughs> yes, we strategies on it. Routes, so we'll talk about that a little bit later, my, the routes that I did as well. But. <clears throat> what, can you talk a little bit more what you actually do at the at Cyber Center? Do you. Sure. So, like a blog or. Um, so there is. Um, some, something like a blog mm -hmm. that we maintain there. Um, so we have the vulnerability research, okay. we have best practices, we have global, and we have forensics. And so those people all invest a lot of time in uh, their area of expertise, and they, um, they develop these uh, great articles based on open source intelligence. Now, I've, I've written a few myself, but I, am, I spend more time uh, working with hardware mm -hmm. and uh, developing labs for students. Right. And, and in fact, I actually taught a class at uh, West Oahu um, two weeks ago, oh. and then I helped out with another one this past week. So. Hey, hold on, I can't hear. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> uh, well, what kind of classes did you teach? So it was on the industrial control systems mm -hmm. um, uh, topic, right? So I was uh, programming Arduino, so oh, I did right. embedded systems programming. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Um, so we actually get to work with the the components that come with the, the Arduino. Oh, yeah. We get to create circuits and uh, you know work with sensors and actuators. And um, yeah, the the labs were a lot of fun. I think I worked pretty hard on it yeah. so that they would have a, a good experience. It with me. Right. Um, ended up being. Um, a lot more time probably than I should have. And a lot of it is programming as well, right? C. Right. C. So uh, for Arduino, it's uh, C programming, mm -hmm. but there's there's extra libraries for Arduino, and uh, it's, it's called wiring, oh, the language, okay. right? So uh, you can use a lot of the tools that, that are uh, either extra for the Arduino or come with like a, a package right. deal. Um, so you have keypads, uh, servo motors, things like that. And uh, the libraries that are built into the wiring mm -hmm. uh, language make it okay. much simpler. All right, well, we'll be right back. Hold that thought, Nathaniel. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Um... Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. 
I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Rochelle Mansloon, your guest host, and today we're talking about how to start a career in cybersecurity, and we have Nathaniel Weeks as my guest, and we were just talking about, you know, our steps and how we we are starting our cybersecurity career, and we're almost at the end. We're going to graduate soon, so I graduate actually at the end of this, no, not the end of the semester, December, right? and Nathaniel, I think, was it spring? Will be yeah. the spring, so right? We started around the same time, and only because I have another degree, so I'm a little bit ahead of him, but um, we're, you know. <laughs> you know, that's that's not entirely uncommon right now. Yes, I've, right. Uh, I didn't know this until the other day, but Melissa has a master's degree. Yes, that's what I heard, too. You're right. And yes. uh, so we've got other students that yes, have bachelor's degree. Yes, there's a lot degree. of students Daniel that Daniel has are, a bachelor's right. degree. Right, there's a lot of students where this is their second career. Absolutely. Right? And a lot of people ask me, like, so why did you switch, you know, but I mean, why can't? Why shouldn't I? I mean, this is such a growing um, industry, and like it's booming. So I mean, I feel like we're we're gonna have a job regardless of what we decide to, you know, which path to take. You know, sure. so right. As long as you're putting in the time and the Correct. effort, it, yes. it'll the opportunity is there now. Yes, there's a major shortage mm -hmm. of personnel, and yes. so I mean that's why there's so that's why I said so many doors open up. Mm -hmm. Right, you have uh, a lot of people knocking. Right, and so. Well, having said that, so another th the other thing that students could also do is um, to network, and that's something that I've done a lot too. As, mm -hmm. as so is so is um, yep. right. So in person networking is actually very important. I mean, I would attend a lot of like the um, conferences, meetups, um, like I was saying the um, what was that the, like talk to professionals, seek um, you know just advice or anything mm -hmm. and you never know you know they might have a job opening or they might say hey right. you just send us your resume kind of thing right and that was actually that? some of the the first advice I got yeah. coming into the field was I, I just started out the gate by asking uh, one of the professionals professionals I knew in the field uh, you know I said is there any advice you could give me and the first piece of advice they said was network mm -hmm. right and they, they didn't really have anything else for <laughs> me they just like network yep and um, you know, work hard, of course, yes. right? So that's that's something I guess that goes unsaid, right? You have to right. do that. But but yeah, that was that was how I got started right out the gate. Was mm -hmm. um, the my first internship with High Tech Hui was only because I was out uh, I was at a social event um, and was networking with some of the professionals. And that's how you found that internship, huh? Yep. Yeah, because not a lot of these internships are advertised, right? Absolutely. And there's some that you can just get from word of mouth. You know, just I mean, just ask. And in our field, it's a little bit harder because a lot of people are, you know, their soft skills still need to work on it. Absolutely. You know, a little bit more, um, what's the word? Um, introverted. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Right. So, but I mean, it's, I mean, you, we, I try to encourage, especially in my club that I'm in, and, and Nathaniel we used to be my officer as well, and he knows that, you know, as much as possible, try and, you know. Communicate. Communicate, correct. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so even uh, that, that first internship, right? Mm -hmm. That was that was not posted anywhere. Right. Right. In fact, there was no internship. And I never heard of cyber um, high tech, tech hui before, right. but now I'm hearing all about them. Right. right and they have great reviews, yes. and like I said, they have great people too. Um, but because I went up and, and started talking to mm -hmm. the one of the owners about it, uh, Anne Marie, right. um, she said they had been thinking about it. And so they actually created the internship oh, after that conversation. Right. And and now James, right, uh, one James, of our other yes. students, is interning mm -hmm. there because I had uh, recommended him. And I think well, he so. actually has a job now too, right? Like does he? Part -time. Does yeah, he work I with them so, now? Like a part-time job. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's I mean that's a great place to be. Right. And so good people to know, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there any other like um besides like what we already have? Uh, talked about what else do you think would help students like 
I know like we've done clubs, so I'm mm -hmm. actually the president for the HATS, um, Hawaii Advanced Technology Society. Um, do you think that kind of helps people, you know, just the leadership kind of? Sure, I mean, working roles. in a team, uh, doing projects. Yeah. I mean, this could help anyone in any field, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're in school for anything, yeah. join a club, you know, try to work with other people. I mean, you may not always get along yeah. with everyone, and that's that's the real world too, yep. right? So you have to you have to learn from them, uh, especially if you're young. Like mm -hmm. we've we've both worked previously, yes. you know. Uh, so I mean, we've already got a dose of that. But I mean, if you're young, you're you know coming into this field, it'll be a great uh, experience. And not only that, you'll you'll meet people that know vastly more than you probably, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've met people that are so smart, and uh, I hope to know a tenth of what they know someday, uh, despite all my well, work. Well, those are contacts that you want to keep, right? So that you'll learn something <laughs> sure. from them, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a, a great way to uh, make connections early on. And you can carry those connections throughout your career. Mm -hmm. I agree with that totally. I, I mean, like, we've met, like, I don't know, like, with my internships, you know, I. I've done it with the state, so I've met some kind of top officials, and there's a lot of people that I don't even know what their position ones and positions are in the mm -hmm. field. And later on, I find out like, oh, that was like a big wig. I was like, oh, I didn't. Know. Right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right. You uh, never know who you're going to meet, right? Sure. And then um, interning with the the cyber center. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. You are, we present to uh, several. <laughs> yes, the uh, government. Very. Yeah. There's there's several uh, government agencies that yeah. come in, and and we end up you know, presenting what we've been working on, and sometimes they'll have feedback, other times they'll, you know, be just happy with, mm -hmm. with what we're doing, and um, they're, they're really interested in the program, right? And so we're, we're kind of spokespeople for oh, the program yes. in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, apart from clubs uh, and, you know, certifications, education, and just doing work out, outside of, uh, outside of those things, right? Like setting up your yeah. own labs and everything. Uh, the the one thing that I think sets some people apart is just the drive. Right, the passion, right? Right, yeah. right. and so, I mean, some of these kids have been doing it since they were super young. Yes. And they're the ones that you end up saying, wow, I hope one day yes. to know a tenth of what they know. But, right. um, but having at least that passion at any point in your career and, and then following it right. and, and, and pushing as hard as you can is, is really gonna, you know, Give you Especially more. if you find in our field, there's so many avenues you can take. So if you find something right. you want to focus just on that, then mm -hmm. do that. Because I, mean, I, I know a student that he goes to Manoa, and he's his he's pretty young, younger than us. But his um, parents spent like ten thousand dollars for him to go to a kind of a well-known company to learn all about coding and all that kind of stuff. Right. And now this kid is like he's like a genius. <laughs> right. <laughs> but so, I mean, right. if you have that money, you do it. Right. I mean. Of course. The the ten thousand dollars is I mean, it's a lot right now. Yeah. It really is. And it, it makes it tough when you're trying to pay bills. I mean if you're a kid and your yeah. parents are paying for it, that's of course great. that's yes. <laughs> right. But like you're you and fine. I, we have kids. Right. <laughs> right. It's it, it's more about looking at it as an investment. Yeah. So if if you look at it in any other form, mm -hmm. it can be really hard to pull the trigger on something. Yes. Um, this last certification, seven hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, it, we weren't just doing <laughs> so well off. I was like, well, we have seven hundred dollars that we're never going to use because we get so much money. Yeah. Uh, it was just because it was such a, a big opportunity, and um, you know, it's going to pay off down the road. Yes. So you have to look at it that way. And that's pretty much how our education is as well, right? I mean, like, I know all the struggles that we both go through. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I mean, I mean, it's, the payoff is going to be big, I know, so. Right. And for those classes, I mean, they require you to do some things that you may not necessarily feel like contribute right. uh, directly to what you're going to be doing. And, and that may be true, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You may end up, you know, working in a, a networking position, but, you know, everything that you studied in one class was on an entirely different topic, yeah. right? Um, but it definitely makes you more well-rounded, correct? right? And especially when you're doing um, presentations, mm -hmm. when you're doing papers, mm -hmm. things that you wouldn't normally do. Uh, if you had just taken up the first job offer and just quit school and yeah. went with it, right? So uh, it's just building your, your skill set, right? Mm -hmm. Your character and right. the well-rounded part is really where I yes. focus on. I think it's a, I think a that's great. that's what will make you a, 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 the best security professional if you're well-rounded. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add? Like, I know that um, 
Is, oh, I know. So what other certifications you plan to take down the road? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have enough money left by then. <laughs> right. Yeah. At some point, I hope to have a company pay for it know, when right? I'm <laughs> employed, but um, apart from internships. Yeah. Anyway. But I, I really liked the Cisco exam that mm -hmm. I've taken. Oh, yeah. That was one of the. That yeah, was one of the funner ones. It was mm -hmm. a challenge. Yeah. Uh, and so I think I, I really enjoy networking. Yeah. I enjoy that that side of the house. And so I definitely want to do that. There's a new CompTIA one that came out, the Pentest Plus. Oh, yeah, I want to do that. And, too. Um, and in the fall, I'll be taking the NCL class. Mm -hmm. And so I'll be doing a lot of the, the Pentest tools, using a lot of the Pentest tools. And like I said, creating my own Pentest lab. So I, I figured that could coincide with those right. things and you know make it line up like the other classes have. Well, after you, you know you're, you graduate from West Ohio, do you plan on like getting your master's? Or I know a lot of, like Dave, he always encourages me because I already right. have a, I already have a bachelor's. I have two, right. <laughs> but he wants. He's like, you know, do your master's. But... Right. Well, like, <laughs> like I've heard several times now, you know, the the master's is the new bachelor's, right? Yes. So that's kind of sad because he worked so hard for the bachelor's, <laughs> know, right? and you're like, well, not quite good enough anymore. But yes. but that's that's fine. And in, in, in our field, actually, the bachelor's is kind of good enough because yeah, there are so many opportunities. But if you want to keep pursuing higher positions and, and more uh, opportunities, managerial. right, and, and managerial positions, it really helps to have the master's degree. If you want to teach a class, that's, oh, yes, that's required that's right. as well. So I, I could teach one class <laughs> yes, at West Oahu, but I can't teach a semester of classes. And uh, he and I got off, and I know, we keep getting told, like, come back to KCC and teach a class, but you can see it, your master's. <laughs> right. That's kind of like holding us back. <laughs> right. Just, well, <laughs> just two years of your yeah. life and the several classes. Well, do you have any other like tips before we we say goodbye? Um, any like quick takeaways? I think we pretty much covered it. I mean, um, there's a lot to it, and it okay. takes uh, sometimes it takes stepping a, uh, taking a step back yeah. because you can get so invested in how much of a challenge the day-to-day -day is. Yeah. Um, but in retrospect, sometimes you, you, you're you surprised by how, th how things really are going. Mm -hmm. um, so this semester has been really tough mm -hmm. for me. But then when I look back, uh, it's probably been the best semester I've had, you know. And when you look back, you look how far you come, you know? <laughs> right. I, I don't want to pat myself on the back too much. It's, you know, there's still a lot of struggle ahead. Yes, and, for both uh, of us, I think. Right. But just stay motivated yeah, and, stay and motivated. work hard. I would say, like, never stop learning and apply what you sure. learn, because, you know, you'll most likely forget it, but you keep mm -hmm. applying what you learn. Right. And that's even after you graduate. Yes. Uh, you know, the lifetime, the lifetime learners. Yes. Everyone like. is. Yep. <laughs> I definitely am one of those. <laughs> yep. uh, well, thank you for, for coming on to the show. Thank Daniel. you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Okay. Until next time, stay safe and aloha. This is the Cyber Underground.